from the previous video, we've developed a solid foundation for talking about objects like ordered pairs and Cartesian products. So now in this video, we're going to put that to use in discussing relations, which is a big topic in set theory. So what is a relation? So as in previous videos, we want to be clear about what our intuition is about these ideas. And then after having done that, we want to abstract it so that we can start to cover a good number of cases and to put this into a precise mathematical definition. So in terms of relations, suppose I have two objects, x and y. So by x being related to y, what we mean is that x is tied to y in some way. There, there's just something about x and something about y that ties x to y. So we're going to say that x is related to y in some way. And this is probably better explained in terms of examples. So what do we mean by less than, the phrase less than? So in terms of examples, we mean things like 1 is less than 2. There's just something about the number 1 that makes it less than the number 2. 2 is less than 3. But there's just something about the number 3 that doesn't qualify it for this sort of relation. So we say that 3 is not less than 2. And this doesn't have to be mathematical either. Uh, we can say that the phrase taller than would express in relation. So the phrase Bigfoot is taller than me is perfectly intelligible, uh, expresses a relation between two objects, namely Bigfoot and me. And also notice that the, this, this sort of uh, relation is not reflexive in the sense that it doesn't necessarily follow that Bigfoot being taller than me implies that I am taller than Bigfoot. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. So a uh, final example of a relation is um, the phrase more obnoxious than. So we can say that things like uh, Lawrence Krauss is more obnoxious than Justin Bieber, which I take as a self-evident truth, and I'll just leave it at that. So let's now abstract what we're talking about in terms of relations. So let's call such a relation R. And let's say R is the symbol which we reflexively associate with less than. So statements like 1R2 means that 1 is less than 2, or 1 stands in a relationship to 2 such that 1 is less than 2, or 2R3 means something similar, 2 is less than 3, and so on. So that R symbol is going to denote our relation. And similarly, we can say that things like Krauss, R, Bieber, expresses the same relation as above, if R is meant to be more obnoxious then. So instead of saying things like 1R2 and 2R3, which are kind of cumbersome and aesthetically displeasing, let's deal with ordered pairs instead to denote relationships. So like I said, instead of 1R2, let's form the ordered pair 1, 2, and then stick it into some set R. So the operation, or the, I'm sorry, the relation R being less than could be uh, described perfectly well as a set containing the object 1, 2, the ordered pair 1, 2, and 2, 3, perhaps 3, 4, or 3, 10, something like that. So this, or, this set containing a bunch of ordered pairs is going to contain the same amount of information as what we're describing above verbally. So we're now going to define a relation as a set whose members are ordered pairs, just as we did in the previous slide. So this is, remember, this is going to be our definition for relation. So as an example, let's say I have some relation A. So in terms of set builder notation, this is going to be read as A is all of the ordered pairs X and Y, such that X is equal to 2 or 4 or 6, and that Y has a relationship with X such that it's twice X. So what does that set look like? So it's going to be the set of ordered pairs 2, 4, 4, 6, and 6, 12. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we can see that the X values, or the first component of the ordered pairs, have the relationship with Y, or the second component, such that the Y component is 2 times the X component. So this is just one example of a relation. And as you may have noticed in a previous slide, if you ever see something like X, big R, Y, we often use this as a shorthand for um, the ordered pair X, Y living in the set R. And if this set R has only ordered pairs, then we would, we would say that R is a relation. So another example of a relation, let's say we have some set C, which has the members 1, 2, and 3, and we form the Cartesian product C times C. And C times C is going to be a relation itself, because it's a set whose members are ordered pairs. So if you remember from the previous lecture, C times C, in this case, is going to be 
all possible x values combined with all possible y values. So you pick out one as your x value, and then you have three possibilities for y. You have one, two, and three. You move to your next x value, two. And then you have three possibilities once more, one, two, and three. And then in this case, we have three members in this set. Uh, so c times c is going to have three squared members. And uh, another important thing about this is that any subset of c times c would also be a relation. And that's just because if you take some subset of this, since c times c has only ordered pairs in it, any subset of it is also going to be just ordered pairs. So uh, let's consider the example where r means uh, less than. So what subset of c times c would uh, correspond to the property less than? Well, there are only three that are going to do that. You're going to have 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3, just because for 1, the only number, the only two numbers in C that are greater than 1 are 2 and 3. So we have 1, 2 in the set R, 1, 3 in the set R. And for the number 2, the only number that's greater than 2 in the set C is 2, 3. So the Y value stands in a relationship to X such that Y is going to be greater than X. Or we can also say that X stands in a relationship to Y such that X is less than Y. Now that we've defined what a relation is, uh, let's introduce some terminology concerning relations. First, we're going to say that the domain of a relation is the set of all the first complements in a relation. So to be precise, the domain of some relation R is going to be all the X values such that there exists another Y value such that the order pair XY lives within the relation R. So basically all this is saying is that um, you're going to pick out all the x values in that relation r. So to take an example, let's say r is that previous uh, less than relation. So we have three um, members in that set. We have the order pair 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. So we're just going to pick out all the x values, or all the first components. So we see one there, another one there, and a 2. And we just throw those into another set. So in this case, the domain of r is just going to be 1, 2. And notice this isn't any order pair like 1, 2. It's just 1, the number 1, and the number 2. So the domain is just simply picking out the x values. So very naturally, we're going to define the range of relation as picking out all of the y components, or all the second components in a relation. So to be precise, the range of r is all the y values such that there exists an x value such that the order pair x, y lives within the relation r. So again, from that previous example, we pick out all of the second components, or as I call them, just the y components. So we have 2 there, 3, and 3, and we just throw those into another set, 2, 3. So the range of r is just the set 2, 3. So now the field of a relation, uh, this may be new. Uh, so we're going to define the field of a relation as just uh, union in uh, the domain of r with the range of r. So we already have the domain of r here and the range of r there. So we're just going to take the union of the two sets. So the field of R is just going to be 1, 2, 3. So as in previous lectures, we want to show how the properties of set theory can be used to rigorously justify um, more familiar mathematical objects or ma more familiar uh, mathematical intuitions. So let's go back to what we're talking about in the previous lecture as representing sets as, grid, as possibly a grid between two sets. So suppose we have some set A, which the horizontal axis is going to measure the magnitude of the elements of A, and we have some vertical axis, which is going to measure the magnitudes of some set B. And then we plot all of the order pairs that are in R, and we shade them like so. So everything in this shaded region is going to live within the relation R. So going back to what we were saying with domain of R, this is just going to pull out all the x values of all the shaded stuff here. So that means that uh, projecting this image onto the horizontal axis is going to give us the domain of R. And correspondingly, projecting this image onto the, onto the vertical axis is going to give us the range of R. So um, this corresponds very nicely to what we're familiar with with, um, with functions and graphs. So if you take some curve, you uh, project it onto the x-axis, that gives you the domain, and you project down to the y-axis, and that gives you the range. So our notions of set theory correspond very nicely to 
our notions of graphs and functions. So again, to be precise, the domain of R is a projection onto the axis measuring the first components of, of the order pair x, y that are in R. And the range is just going to be the projection onto the vertical axis. In this case, it's vertical axis measuring the second components of the x, y order pairs. Just to solidify our intuition about relations, um, let's take another example. So suppose we have some set A, which contains just 1, 2, and 3. Uh, one important property to know about the Cartesian product A times A is that if you take any subset of this, uh, you'll form another relation. And furthermore, all the possible relations between two members of A can be given by all of the possible subsets of A times A. To now introduce another piece of terminology, um, if we discover some relation R to, to be a subset of A times A, then we're going to say that R is a binary relation on A. So any possible subset of this, we're going to say it's a binary relation on A. So just to take one example, um, let's go back to that less than relation. And let's call that R. So we have three members in that set. So we have one, two, one, three, and two, three. So we see that this is indeed a subset of A times A. So we're going to say that this relation uh, less than is a binary relation on A, on the set A. And uh, just to give a visual interpretation of this, in the sense of giving all possible relations on A, or all possible binary relations on A, let's, uh, let's take the set A and form two axes. So let's say this is going to be like the x value, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3. And over here, we're going to have the y value, y equals 1, y equals 2, and y equals 3. So essentially, we're taking the set A and putting it on both the horizontal and the vertical axes. And then you're going to form this grid. So this point, for example, would be the point 1, 1. This would be 2, 2, and 3, 3. So hopefully that's clear what I'm talking about. So the, the black dots on this grid are going to represent all of the members of A times A. So you can see we just have this 3x3 three three grid here. And now if I draw in red those points that are in R as these three, we can see that this is indeed a subset of A times A. So that's, a, that's what this relation would look like here, just these three dots plotted in there. Uh, but I could imagine other relations on A times A too. By taking subsets of A times A, I could have some relation of equality where I'm only going to pull the members out of this if the X and Y components are equal. So what would that look like? That would just look like this, which also looks like the equation Y equals X. And I can also imagine other bizarre uh, subsets of A times A. So this one I just picked kind of whimsically. But this is also a, uh, a possible binary relation on A, just because it's a subset of A times A. And um, hopefully you guys can see that this is going to very nicely lead into our intuition behind functions. So for example, this thing that I've drawn out here, this relation that I've plotted here, would not be a function, just because we have some x value here that's going to output two y values. Whereas the example here of the binary relation, for each x value, I'm, out I'm outputting only one and only one y value. So that concludes this video on relations. So next time we'll be using our notion of relations to start to discuss functions. And that'll be a quite intensive video, so I figured I'd make this one a little bit shorter. And here are the practice problems for, for this lecture. Um, also be sure to review the notion of union uh, if you've forgotten that, because that'll come into play. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe, leave a comment, and hopefully see you next time.